In 2022, at the University of Cape Town, archaeologists uncovered glue that was 100,000 years old. Studying the area, scientists concluded that our earliest ancestors somehow learned to extract glue from the leaves of the Podocarpus tree using condensation. Condensation is the process where a substance changes from a gas into a liquid or solid. They then use this glue to make household items and even tools. Not bad for supposedly hopelessly primitive hunters, right? When reading history textbooks, modern people often feel like everything is neatly explained. The history of humanity is laid out from ancient times, the causes of conflicts are known, and the dates of inventions are fixed. But ironically, a professional archaeologist would probably scratch their head and say, who knows how it really was? That's because archaeological discoveries in recent years have been turning our understanding of history upside down. And in the next couple of minutes, we're going to talk about some of them. Today, you will find out which ancient skull might force scientists to rewrite the entire history of humanity. Could the legendary Dragon Man be the most important human ever discovered? When did humans start keeping cats just for fun? And were we really sharing the planet with giant unknown humans long before history says we should have existed? Let's start with the plague. What picture forms in your mind when you hear about dozens of deaths in every city and village? Most likely, you imagine dirty people living in gloom with rotting bodies lying in the streets, avoided by everyone. Those bodies in your mind are picked up by a special worker and thrown into a pit. After all, the Black Death epidemic in the mid-14th century alone wiped out up to 200 million people. Dirty and unhygienic medieval times simply couldn't have done it any other way, right? For a long time, this belief was even supported by historians. Considering the scale of the pandemic and the technological backwardness of the time, the general consensus was that mass graves, huge pits where bodies were dumped, buried, and quickly abandoned, were the norm. The problem is that archaeologists have found only a couple of such plague pits, and mostly in large cities. In 2020, Hugh Wilmot from the University of Sheffield, together with his team, discovered a mass burial of plague victims in Lincolnshire, in the east of England. But this was no chaotic plague pit. Each skeleton was carefully wrapped, gently laid side by side, and buried according to all the traditions of the time. Evidence even suggests there was a proper burial ceremony. It turned out that people in the Middle Ages, despite the plague, still followed their customs and buried the dead respectfully. Even more surprising, scientists have only been able to reliably determine whether a person died of plague since 2021. Once that became possible, it was revealed that many organized cemeteries once thought to be ordinary were actually plague cemeteries. This means that most plague victims were buried in the traditional way, and plague pits were the exception. In short, the Middle Ages weren't quite as savage as we imagined. And it's not just the Middle Ages that challenge our assumptions. On the island of Borneo, just a month ago, archaeologists found the skeleton of a man who lived 31,000 years ago. He was missing his left foot, and at first researchers kept looking for it. Then they noticed something unusual about the upper part of the leg, the tibia and fibula. The bones connecting the knee and ankle looked as if they had been cut cleanly with no jagged edges, ruling out the involvement of animals. It became clear that this was an ancient amputation. Given the extreme antiquity, the first theory was a violent injury. But to their surprise, there were no signs of infection. This meant the wound had been treated and bandaged to prevent it. Things became even more interesting when scientists compared the size of the bones to those on the right leg. The bones on the right were slightly larger, meaning the left leg had been amputated when the person was a child. This left almost no chance it was an accident. Archaeologists, working with medical experts, confirmed that they were looking at a person who had undergone a proper amputation and then lived for several more years afterward. In other words, the operation was successful, something you wouldn't expect from people living 31,000 years ago. It seems our ancestors' knowledge of medicine was far greater than we assumed. And maybe their understanding of morality wasn't so different from ours either. To explore that, we'll need to call in some cats. What do we actually know about cats? The DNA of domestic cats is 95% identical to that of tigers. 
This makes cats very different from dogs, which have evolved so far from their wild ancestors that they don't even share the same number of chromosomes with jackals. From this, scientists have concluded that after dogs were domesticated, people kept them constantly by their side, while cats were allowed to roam freely so they could hunt rats and keep their wild instincts sharp. Rats, of course, have always been a real scourge for humans. It's easy to understand why people might have a kind of deep, almost genetic sense of gratitude toward cats. Sometimes this even shows up in history. Take ancient Egypt, for example, where cats that protected food supplies from pests were treated as gods. In general, animals in ancient times were kept either for practical purposes or for religious reasons, but archaeological evidence from the same Egypt tells a more complex story. In 2021, researchers published the results of a study of a large animal cemetery on the outskirts of Bereniki, dated to around 2,000 years ago. Archaeologists excavated the remains of 585 animals. Out of these, 536 were cats, but there were also 32 dogs, 15 monkeys, and even a fox and a falcon. What's remarkable is that all of them were buried in different, individual ways. One dog was wrapped in palm leaves. Almost every cat had a collar with a tag, and one monkey was even placed inside something resembling a sarcophagus. This shows that the cemetery didn't belong to a zoo and wasn't just a place where dead animals were discarded. People buried their pets with care and affection. Most importantly, this affection wasn't just for the services these animals provided. Many of the remains were of elderly cats and dogs. They were far too old to catch rats or guard their owners, yet they were still cared for until the end of their lives. This means that the human desire to have pets for companionship didn't appear only in modern times. People have been keeping animals not only for their usefulness, but also for the joy and comfort they bring since ancient days. It's an interesting fact, but we promised you something that changes history, and that part is coming next. Let's open the textbook and see what it tells us about how modern humans came to be. According to the standard version, our story begins about 200,000 years ago, somewhere in eastern Africa. Then, roughly 60,000 years ago, Homo sapiens left Africa, settled somewhere in what is now Turkey, and after another couple of tens of thousands of years made it to northern Europe, pushing out the Neanderthals. But reality, as usual, is more complicated. In 1970, in the Apodima Cave in southern Greece, archaeologists found two skulls. They named them Apodima I and Apodima II and began studying them. Apodima II turned out to be a Neanderthal, about 170,000 years old, which fits neatly into our timeline. But Apodima I was a shock. It was a Homo sapiens skull, and its age was estimated at 210,000 years. The problem is, according to the official story, modern humans didn't leave Africa until 150,000 years later. How did this skull end up in that cave? No one knows for sure. Historians only have theories. The most popular one says there were multiple attempts by modern humans to leave Africa for Europe, but each time the Neanderthals pushed them back. So, the saga of Homo sapiens versus Neanderthals wasn't a one-time event. It probably had several seasons, and the start of that series might be far earlier than we think because even the widely accepted theory of modern humans appearing 200,000 years ago in Eastern Africa is now under question. Back in 1960, at a site called Jebel Irhud in Morocco, miners discovered ancient human remains. They were dated to about 40,000 BCE, and then mostly forgotten. In 2004, a new team found another skull and part of a jaw at the same site. Those bones were also cataloged, incorrectly, as Neanderthal remains. But in 2017, the remains were re-examined, and scientists were stunned to realize they had not one, but five Homo sapiens individuals in front of them. The earlier researchers had misclassified the species, but the bigger error was the dating. Using modern equipment, the team found that these people lived between 280,000 and 350,000 years ago, at a time when, according to science, Homo sapiens shouldn't even exist yet. To make it even more intriguing, Morocco is in northwest Africa, not the east, challenging the belief that humans originated in the east of the continent. The team carried out 3D modeling of the skulls to confirm that they belong to Homo sapiens. Jacques Hublin, who led the study, stated firmly, there was no mistake. 
These 300,000 year old individuals from a Moroccan cave looked just like us and could easily blend in on any modern city street. Today, many scientists believe Homo sapiens appeared much earlier than we thought, and not in East Africa, but throughout the entire continent. Unfortunately, this is not the only secret in the story of human origins. Even Neanderthals remain a mystery, and our earlier relatives are an even bigger unknown. This fact became very clear after the discovery of a skull in Harbin, in northeast China, in 2018. The skull is enormous. The brain of this person was twice the size of ours today. It was far too big not only for Homo sapiens, but even for Neanderthals and any other species known to science. Radiocarbon dating showed that the owner of this huge head lived at least 150,000 years ago. This means modern humans lived at the same time as such giants, and may have even met them. The find was nicknamed the Dragon Man, and scientists began trying to figure out who he might have been. The best guess so far is the Denisovans, an extinct human species like the Neanderthals, first identified in 1984 from remains found in Denisova Cave. The teeth and jaw of a young girl found there showed that they were neither Homo sapiens nor Neanderthals. They had their own DNA. Unfortunately, in the 40 years since then, we have learned almost nothing else. It was only established that Denisovans probably lived in Tibet and Asia, and that's it. There are still no complete skulls, although fragments were found in Siberia in 2019. Many historians believe that the dragon man discovered in China is actually a Denisovan. If that's true, then these people were huge, but the ending of this story is still ahead, and the fate of the find remains a mystery. So for now, the history of humanity is still something we only know in broad strokes. There is much more to discover. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel, we'll explore it together, and if you like this video, you can watch this one too. See you next time.